Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Naomi, I did have a question yeah. uh, for both you and Jocelyn, perhaps. Um, just wondering whether in terms of your practice and your process, whether you either of you noticed any changes or shifts in terms of the pandemic? Um, did you notice that there was an impact in terms of your practice and your process? Um, just if you could speak to that, that'll be really helpful. Because I noticed that you had a lot of lockdown poems mm -hmm. and with Jocelyn, there was a lot of poems around quiet, alone and grief and bereavement in a sense, even though it might not have come from a place of pandemic, but I just wonder if that has any impact on you guys as writers really. Maybe I'll let Jocelyn go. Would you like to go first, Jocelyn? Well, it gave, it gave time. Um, and in a sense, the, the, the freedom that was available was to, mm -hmm. to go out and walk. Um, so I, I found options of uh, doing a lot of Netflix. Mm -hmm. Mm. Writing poetry, <laughs> and I did a bit of both. <laughs> um, and then I found that communicating with people who you were okay? in very yeah. difficult yeah. situations. I'm just having a good time here. I can switch this off. Sorry, Nev, Nev. Shh. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because I was in a in a lot of contact with, um, as a homeopath, I was meeting a lot of people who were very distressed by what was happening and either challenged themselves physically or finding themselves very anxious. Um, and also people in other parts of the world who were going through stuff that made this look like a picnic. Um, and it wasn't necessarily even to do with, to do with COVID. Um, yeah, it, 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 it forced me to go inside, um, which was good. I'm, I'm not sure that I can say more than that. Thank maybe, you. I, maybe I'll think of something more when Naomi speaks. <laughs> Thanks, Jocelyn, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, well, I think my, my answer is partly similar in that, yeah, obviously, you know, I just spent a lot of time walking. And so I wanted to read that long poem because it really spoke to my sense of place and that sense of like, constantly discovering things that I had no idea were there though I've lived in this flat for 20 years and being and looking very closely like looking at those barnacles and just like it was mesmerizing like you know kind of almost hallucinogenic quality of like watching these barnacles dancing um, so that happened this kind of microscopic and local and then there was that dizzying sense of you know the global and so kind of trying to incorporate, you know, everything from the news and so developing this, you know, what I've already been working on in Adamantine is the docu-poetics. Um, I, I think it deepened work I'm already doing uh, in that respect. So thinking about who am I, where am I speaking from? Um, you know, I'd like to really thank you, Kathy, for also for your quote for the back of the book, which, um, you know, really encouraged me in my writing about, you know, around, you know, George Floyd. Um, and trying to, you know, you know, in a book that was so much a kind of the whole book is sort of about the media, you know, like that, that trying to find as much as I could about him as a person in this media event. Uh, I can, so I went to uh, local newspapers, you know, again, it was the local, you know, but I went to his local newspaper, I went to the Minneapolis Star mm -hmm. Tribune. So one of the poems that I wrote is based on a story that one of his ex-girlfriends gave, for example. So I think it, it moved me into sort of a deep understanding of what I want to do um, and how I hope to do it. Um, and, and, and just while we're here, I'd also like to thank Kay, Kay Syrad for publishing that lockdown poem and also for her work on eco-poetics um, and workshops that I've taken that have helped me in that line of, line of my poetics as well. Thank you, great question. Thank you, Naomi, thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, I, I just want to say um, uh, that it's such it's a kind of relief to hear such overtly political poems. You know, so yours, Naomi, in particular, but also Jocelyn, you know, for example, Burn to the Ground and so on. And I was trying to think, you know, what, you know, there's, there's a saying, you know, all art is political, all poetry is political, but when it's, when it's overt and it comes from what you've just said, um, who am I, where am I speaking from? That's when it feels significant. And um, as I say, it feels like a relief. It feels like we are released into that important space. And, you know, thank you for that because, you know, not only takes a lot of courage, but takes a lot of insight and, um, and knowledge. <laughs> so, thank you. Well, well, thank you, Kay, and and for encouraging that, you know, with your editing and your all your own work. It's you know, eco projects can only be political, uh, and I know that you know, you and Kind and Kind with Claire Whistler are you know constantly trying to decolonize um, eco poetics, which is you know making that overt, you know, making 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 the politics of it, uh, the human politics of it, overt. Um, I think what I found moving from North America to the UK is that there is, has been uh, in the last decades, uh, maybe last century, uh, kind of a hostility toward political poetry as if any poetry that espoused some kind of belief was automatically didactic, reductive, mm -hmm. just, just broadcasting. Um, and, and yet when you look back at the romantics, you know, I mean, Shelley, look at Shelley, look at the Mask of Anarchy. You know, it's as though there's this sort of cherry picking of the past um, and as though only lyric poetry, only the anecdotal, you know, only that can, you know, can be poetry. Uh, so as I grew up in North America, you know, and influenced by the beats, you know, one of the poets I really admire now also is Marilyn Hacker. And of course, there's Audre Lorde as well, and Adrian Rich, you know, so you have this great tradition of American poets, um, you know, American feminist poets and gay poets, Ginsburg, um, you know, like knowing that you had to speak for who, who, you, who you are in the world, you know, and who and, and co your collective identities. Um, so, uh, and, and, and thinking of poetry, you know, perhaps with the beats as well in a shamanic way, which I would connect with Jocelyn's work uh, as well, that poetry is a, is a force for change and can be a force for change. And I think, you know, and, and I feel that maybe the, hopefully the pandemic has made pe more people kind of hungry for poetry um, that, you know, to, to quote Adrian Mitchell does not ignore them. You know, Adrian Mitchell famously having saying most people ignore poetry because most poetry ignores most people. Uh, and I think that's something that Waterloo Press, you know, is proud to be part of. We've always, you know, we've always loved actually anger. There's a lot to be angry about, you know. Um, we just we just love that, you know, and anger is a verbal energy, you know, that we can capture and, and uh, in our poetry. Uh, and it's as powerful as grief and nostalgia, you know, which is, seems to be the dominant mode um, in, you know, it has been at least in British poetry, though I think British poetry is changing now. Yeah. And in part, you know, thanks in no small part to, you know, all the emerging Black and Asian uh, poets in, in the UK are finally getting some of their due. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, rant over. <laughs> well, maybe as, as name is Dad, perhaps I can... I don't, I mean, I mean, listening to the poetry spoke very deeply to me. Um, and I'm speaking from Vancouver Island on the West Coast of, of Canada and British Columbia. Listening to the poetry, um, mm -hmm. I don't really have a question. I don't have questions. I'm not a poet. I'm not a literary person. But what it made, but, I, but for mm -hmm. me, because of my own work, I sort of recognize the themes of human rights and social justice, environmental concerns running through them. And having taught in universities for a lot of years, um, particularly in schools of social work, teaching social policy, um, it's really struck me that the questions that are being raised here in, this, in, this, in the poems 
uh, should really be required reading in other disciplines other than creative writing and English. Um, and I don't know how that comes about, but I'm thinking of the UK, how most of the politicians who are running the country at the moment all seem to have studied PPE at, at Oxford. And I wonder what chance they actually have. And I'm not, you know, and I'm just sort of being serious here actually to consider that, you know, what our poets are, are, are writing about and how that gets in, into those curricula. Um, not just, and I'm not just thinking about social work, but business administration about, you know, in terms of environmental studies. I think there are, but I don't know if, you know, for those of you who teach in universities, how this actually works, but I do know from my own experience over the years that um, faculties sort of tend to operate in silos. We tend, you know, we, there's a great lot of talk about cross-disciplinarity, but it, it really occurs. And I've often thought, well, you know, literature actually, um, you know, has a great contribution to make. And I would like to see, you know, the poems in this collection and I'm doubtless others actually be shared much more widely um, in, in, in the context of, uh, of ensuring that um, young people uh, are actually uh, come face to face with these uh, uh, realities and expressed through poetic means. That's my comment, that's dad's comment. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much. West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Action point. Action, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, at my university, we now have a department of humanities, so we, it gives slightly more scope. So whereas previously it was English and creative writing was its own program, now we're kind of in a broader umbrella. So I do have a bit more contact now with politics, politics colleagues. Um, and I find it sort of individuals, you know, who might be more open and so it's sort of making those connections. And I have one politics colleague right now that I'm going to be doing a, a a talk on myth with and you know so that might might develop later on yeah seems to take you know particular individuals I think can can make a difference I don't know if there's any other um, lecturers here who might want to speak to that are there any other questions anyone who might be feeling a little shy but want to write something in the chat or shall we Say goodbye. Okay, well, I think what I've actually forgotten to do, I'm very sorry, even though I plan to do this, is uh, put all put the, all the book details uh, in the chat. So you can basically, you can buy the book by going to Waterloo Press. I think that's probably the easiest way of doing it. You can buy both books. If when you, when you get to the checkout, they, you'll ask you for a coupon code. If you put in the words book launch in capital letters, book launch, that will give you two pounds off each book. Um, you could actually use it for any book on the site, but please don't. <laughs> it's, not, um, it's not kind of, yeah, that's, yeah. But it's, I haven't figured that out and finished that yet, but um, yeah, you can, uh, you, but very welcome to buy any books on the, on the site, obviously. Um, and, uh, and we'll get them sent out to you this week. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you again, Jocelyn. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, um, everyone who commented. Um, uh, and thank I you. shall say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being bye -bye. here. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Naomi, so much. Mm -hmm. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to end. Good night. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Mm -hmm.